So with the Olympic road races being on the weekend, with the men's being on the Saturday, women's being on the Sunday, I thought it's time to give a little preview uh, of the course and then obviously the favourites as well. So first, I guess we'll just have a look at the men's race first, which is on the Saturday, uh, 230 kilometres long, so pretty decent length, nothing like absolutely bonkers in terms of like 260, like San Remo or 280. Um, but anyway, basically it's pretty hilly, um, so you can see the first climb is like Dos Dokushi Road, which is 4.3k at 6%, so nothing crazy, but it's a long sort of drag upwards. Next climb is Fuji, which is 14.5k at like 6%. So again, it's like, they're just right at tempo, shouldn't be too hard. And then the main one is the Hakumi Pass, um, sorry, the Mikuni Pass, which is 6.8k at 10%, and that's really where the main selection is going to be made. Then there's another small climb, but that's not really going to do anything. And it's downhill to um, the Fuji Speedway, which is a motor racing circuit, but it's not like flat, really. Um, like it's a bit rolly. But anyway, luckily for us, Alberto Betiol has ridden the last part, so he didn't do the Dokushi Ray. However, he did do the Fuji climb, so you can see it's here. He was doing intervals on it, obviously. Um, did like 350 watts up there, and he did it in like an hour. So you can, you can probably say that's similar-ish to what they'll do in the race, maybe a bit quicker, maybe like 45 minutes, um, or sorry, maybe 50 minutes. But again, it's just gonna be ridden at tempo, it's gonna be nothing. It's and then this part here, again, I don't think is going to be too bad. I think, I don't know what has happened to his power meter. Did he like drive or something? I don't really know. But then he went and did the Hikumi, the Mikuni pass, sorry, um, which you can see here again, 10%, 6.7K. He's got the com up here at 6 watts per kilo. So you think they're going to be doing more than 6 watts per kilo, even though it is like far in the race. But because it's one day, I reckon they'll be doing more than 6. So anyway, it's around a 20 minute effort. Um, and I guess... The key point is the the first part's not as steep, um, or sorry, it is a, it's, it's like eleven percent, and you've got this sort of false flat section here, four percent, um, and then it kicks up to the line again, or to the finishing part, nine percent. So it's going to be interesting to see how people do it. Maybe it will just be a tax at the end, but I can imagine if there's a strong team, they'll try and do it. Then this is the little climb. We said five k, five percent, sorry, one point two seven k. I don't think this is going to be much, and then after that, I don't think they went to the Fuji Park. So can't see that um but anyway we're gonna look at the start list now and uh figure out who we think could win it um most people on pro cycling stats have been updated who i think could have a chance of winning it obviously dan martin um richard carapaz kwiatkowski um uh, up there um i don't really see anyone else from these countries really doing well um to be honest i think the favorites are going to be the people with the strongest team in my opinion because i don't know if it 100 percent Oh, sorry, I also forgot Slovenia, obviously Pogacar and Roglic. Well, they're straight at the top. We go through who we've got the, the start. So, like, Belgium, Wout van Aan, Remco, they're really the two strongest guys. Um, it'll be interesting to see, can Wout get over the climb? If he can, he's got a very good chance of winning the sprint. And I think that's really where, how it's going to be decided. It's going to be on the climb, um, the Mikuni pass, like, who gets dropped, who doesn't get dropped, what's the time difference, what's the gaps, because, as we showed before, it's quite a long time like descent if we look at the profile here it's a decent amount to get back on so you can imagine if Wout van Aert's like a minute back let's say or 30 seconds back they might say send Remco back and say right chase back on because he's going to be the best shot um the Slovenians obviously are just going to race very aggressively they really need to need to make sure they come to the line in a small bunch finish probably not with Wout van Aert but if they get either Roglic or Bogaccia in a small finish they are rapid so that's fine France, again, they just need it to be pure climbers. Um, Great Britain, again, pure climbers. Spain, they've got Valverde, but like, I don't know. If, I can't see he, he'd be able to outkick many people. Like, if he's going to be there, so is Roglic or Pogaccia, and I think they probably got a better kick than him. Uh, Italy, I think, also have a really interesting team. Uh, basically, I think they're going to be going for Betio or Moscon, because uh, those guys, you know, if you could imagine Caruso, Ciccone, and Nibali going on the front, drilling it, um, and then Moscon or Betio getting to the finish, they've got a good kick. And the same with the Netherlands, you know, like they've haven't got anyone, maybe a Van Baal if you can get over, but again, going to be need to be in a small bunch. So I think it's really going to depend how it's raced. Um, Dan Martin for Ireland, Carapaz, well, they both need it to be pretty hard. Um, they got all right kicks, but nothing crazy. So I think that's really how it's going to play out. I think it's going to be not a crazy exciting race until the Makuni pass. I don't think much is going to happen with Fuji because it's just too far out. People get dropped like second tier contenders, but the big boys will all be there. Um, and then we'll and then we'll see what happens in the final circuit. Probably be a reduced bunch sprint. I can't really see. Maybe people will go solo. It just depends. But I think if there's any teams, that will be a reduced bunch sprint. 
um, and then or maybe attacks in the very final um, we will see anyway we're gonna go to the women's race and unfortunately their race is a bit lame um, to say the least they I've made a video about this before they go up Doshi Road which we saw before it's like not that exciting then they go over the Kagasaka Pass um, and it's downhill to the Fuji Speedway so basically I don't think it's gonna be as selective um, or no on paper it doesn't look as selective as the men's obviously However, I think because of the women's racing and because of the strength of the Dutch team, it could be almost be more selective just because like the difference in ability that the women's team have from the Netherlands is ridiculous. Like look at that, Demi Vollering, like second in Giro Rosa, very, very good, or in the TT at least. I can't remember why she finished overall, but she like has won uh, flesh this year as well, like super, super strong. Van Vluten, what everyone knows about her. Van der in the same and Voss so like they've got so many cards to play that I think in reality like they're going to dictate the race um everyone else like Australia have some decent riders to be fair like you know, Sarah Gigante climbed really well at Tour Down Under earlier this year uh you've got Alison Jackson from Canada again like decent people but I just can't see too much I think Denmark have an interesting team with Cecilia Utre Ludwig and Emma Norsgaard I don't know if it'll be too hard for Emma Norsgaard obviously she's got a good kick but will she still be there I'm not 100 sure GB again, Diagnan like is a good sprinter in a reduced bunch sprint, but is she gonna be like the top tier contender compared to the Dutch? I'm not sure. Leanne Lipper as well, maybe for Germany. I'm not sure if the rest of them will get over the climbs. It just depends how it's raced, but I mean if you're Netherlands, you probably want to make it pretty hard. And then Mariana Voss can be there at the end, because she is an outrageous climber, obviously. Um, and then she's got a better kick than most people, even like just on a pure bunch sprint, she does. Um, Italy have an interesting team, Elisa Longo Borghini I guess will be there number one and then she'll probably be there in the final but like how will they play it um, and then US as well, Chloe Diger, can Corinne Rivera get over it obviously she has won Tour of Flanders back in the day, that was a couple years ago though uh, so it'll be interesting to see if she can actually perform uh, Marlon Royce is always strong for, for Switzerland but yeah I, I think the women's race is going to be more interesting just because the parkour is less defined like Obviously, it's hilly, but it's not like stupidly hilly that it's just going to be obvious what happens. Well, I think for the men's, everyone knows it's just going to be like the McCuney Pass is going to be where it's the race is really decided. But here, I think the, the women's race could, could go a lot earlier, maybe. Like on this climb here, people, it could be really selective. And then in the end, if the Dutch have three or four riders, they'll just start firing them up the road. So ultimately, I think the women's race will be exciting, but it's just a shame they're not going up Fuji or anything. And I, I don't really understand why, because... I feel like in most other sports, the women's and men's are, like competitions are basically identical. Obviously, tennis maybe they make three sets and five, five sets for the men, but actually the Olympics I think it's both three. But anyway, I just feel like they should have the parkour more similar so that the same type of rider wins because the, I feel like otherwise it's just a bit annoying because you're like the men's. Obviously, we know who's what type of rider is going to win. Well, the women's you're just like, whoa, surely they could got Fiji. Like that's the main point of the race like the men's going up fuji is huge so maybe they could have just changed how like how the race slightly um so they could go up fuji and then uh whatever i mean i don't know all the details there must be some reason why but hopefully it's not something lame like money or something or like it's too much effort to close the roads hopefully it's something like oh the distance is involved we just couldn't do it but it is a shame um that a women's race isn't going up there but I'm not really sure, we can't change anything now, but it'll be interesting for sure. Um, if you're in Europe, the races are pretty early on in the morning, about 4 a.m. there's the kickoff, or whatever they call it, so like the uh, neutralized zone, kilometer zero, um, and I think the men's are supposed to finish about 11, and maybe the women's are a little bit earlier um, than that, so get your alarms on. I mean, I, to be honest, like, I was gonna be like, oh, you must stay up and watch the whole thing, but realistically, I don't think anything's gonna happen until probably, in the men's race at least, the McCooney pass. The women's race, maybe it's more worth watching a little bit further away, because that like the selections will probably come on the Doshi Road, but then I don't think necessarily everything is going to happen until the very finale. Um, but I guess it's just up to you when you start watching. So anyway, cheers for watching, and we will see you in the next one.